It's taken many times me to learn I know this garden's where I want to grow My life was like a seed of inhibition But now I feel like a flower in the sun Stripped away, I know for certain that the life I want to live has just begun. My darling, I have dreamed of you forever. I can't escape the truth of what I know. It's taken many times. And know oh, this garden's where I want to grow What's happening y'all? Welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach and Jen will be out here in a little bit. Um, so today is another day, another flannel, another project. So we uh, got to build a chicken tractor and uh, Jen, she, she is going to build her rabbit tractor but we have uh, 20 Cornish crosses and 7 turkeys in our house right there that need to come out very soon. So we gotta get them a tractor so they can come outside. And I'm going to show you all the most simple tractor that you could possibly build. And I hope you all do it as well. Minimal cutting, minimal materials needed, and short amount of time. And so that's my job today to show you how easy it is. Okay, so what we're gonna build is a very basic eight by eight A-framed square. That's all it is. It's gonna be extremely simple and you're about to see. So our chickens are actually going to be grazing in um, our Premier One fencing, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so this is mainly for them to uh, stay dry and also to get out of the wind of the winter because we're actually doing some winter meat chickens. So one thing to remember with meat chickens is they don't need layer boxes. You know, it'd be nice to give them a roost, but it's not 100% necessary. Uh, you know, they have a very short life. It's about eight to nine weeks and then you harvest them. Um, so they don't need a whole lot, but you got to keep them safe and you got to keep them dry. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm using one by two boards. These are so cheap. Um, they're about, I think it's like a dollar something each at Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever you want to go. Um, they come in like a bundle of six. Um, so that's what we're using for a very light frame because we want to be able to move it. I don't want this thing to be too heavy. And then I'm just going to be putting, um, using the same boards, uh, the eight foot boards and putting them up at an angle to make our A-frame. So this is like I said, very minimal cutting that you need. Um, we're just gonna have to cut a couple angles on our actual frames so they'll sit nicely and we can screw them in. But other than that, mainly it's just the door um, that we're gonna have to do any cutting for. So let's get right at it. I wanna start by screwing in uh, this frame and getting it set. Okay, the frame is done. All I did was just put it in a square and I set them on top. Um, like I said, this isn't gonna be a perfect carpentry, but it's gonna be very functional and good. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually get our A-frames cut uh, and cut the angles. So what I did was, is I used um, 35 degrees. I did 45 uh, and that didn't work out exactly how I wanted it to or expected it to. Um, so then I moved it to 35 and that seemed to focus and be a little bit more flush so we went with 35 so now all we got to do is actually get the a frames up screw them together and then i'm going to run runners all the way down the sides one on the top one in the middle one on the bottom both sides and then uh, that'll allow us one for uh to get it more stable so it won't just be flimsy and two it allows us to put our tin on because we're going to be putting tin uh not chicken wire on the sides because like i said this is mainly for shelter um, and it's not their permanent house.
starting to look like a little house, isn't it? So I just got three little A-frames here. And so I got one on each end and then I put one right in the middle at four foot. Um, that should be plenty of support uh, to be able to handle it. So now what I'm gonna do is on the top here, get way up there. I'm gonna run one all the way down, one all the way down the middle, and one all the way down on the bottom. And so that'll be for support and also for us to be able to uh, nail the tent to it. All right, I'm in it. So I've gotten all the uh, side pieces on here, here, and down on the bottom. So that's all three of them. Now I gotta work on the end. So this back end is just gonna be completely covered with tin. That's gonna give them this whole back side, really the whole thing completely covered. And then right behind you is the front. And that's where we're gonna make a door. And that'll be the one area that'll have some wiring. So it'll allow a little airflow. Um, but we gotta get some framing on the back. So what I'm gonna do is put a board here and a board down there. So this is gonna require a little bit of cutting. I said minimal cutting on this thing. So I'm still holding true to that. Okay, the backside braces are on. And so that was 14 inches, 46 inches, and then I just used one of the eight foot boards on the bottom and didn't cut it. And so now it is time for the frame of the door. And y'all, I'm getting tired of using this little skill saw. Thanks doesn't bring up the chainsaw, what y'all think? What y'all think about them chain call chain call chainsaw action? So there's my little frame for our little door. It's uh, what? How high did you say it was? 52 inches high and 32 inches wide. And so I was actually hoping I could use some of my scrap in our big junk pile over there. Every homestead's got a junk pile. Don't let them fool you. Um, but they're all too short, so I'm gonna have to make my own little door. I'm basically just replicating exactly what this is, um, but to fit on the inside. So I'm gonna put another bracing on the bottom and then I'll make a door that fits in there so if it's 52 inches high well I'll cut underneath right here and then I'll go uh, just a shot under the 32 inches wide so it should fit right inside the frame so now that's my next thing This is one of those rare things that you all see me do. Actually measuring and drawing in line and having an accurate measurement. But I would like this door to be halfway functional and not too crooked. So we're gonna measure this time. So 
So an old trick, um, if you aren't 100%, if you don't do this a lot, like me, um, a trick you can do to kind of save some time, if you're cutting two of the same boards, you can stack them, line them up perfectly, and you can do one cut for two boards. What was that? The little door is complete. How cute is that little thing? So as you can tell, I did finally use a little bit of the scrap that you saw me use the chainsaw again. And there's a little gap here. Um, and we are A-OK -okay with that for the reason that this is gonna be inside of an electrical fence, so we're not really worried about predators. We just wanna make sure everything stays in there and stays warm. So a little gap is no big deal. However, if you wanted to close it off, obviously it would be very simple to do so. You could actually cut it at an accurate measurement and close it off, or you could use chicken wire, whatever you want. But we had that laying around scrap, so that was a quick, easy door. Okay, I just realized I did not get enough tin. But that's okay. You all won't even realize it. it'll just happen. But I got to get this tin screwed on, but that gives you a look of what it's going to look like on the side. So then on the front, I'll be probably just using wire. I doubt I'll be using uh, any kind of tin. I'll just use some kind of chicken wire that we have for the front, which I got some of that. So I'm about three pieces shy for the side here and then I gotta do the back, which I've got a couple smaller six foot pieces, um, but that's still not enough too. Um, you know, any, any man that does any kind of work, you go to Lowe's a few times on a project. So that's what we're gonna have to do. But now, I can at least get this side screwed down. What you doing? Hanging out. Just hanging out in the house? <laughs> Me and Ellie. So we've gotten everything nailed up uh, that I have, the materials that I do have. Sorry, I just went dark on you. I should just straighten up here in a minute. There we go, back to light. So there's the side. I love how it turned out. I think it looks great. Uh, the back, however, I don't like, and so I'm actually gonna go to Lowe's. Well, I gotta go to Lowe's anyways. Um, but I've been using snips, just hand snips. Um, but I found out that there is a tool that you can attach to your drill that isn't like an auto snipper. So I just, I don't like how that looks. I don't think it looks good. Um, but we've gotten everything on there for the most part. So now it's time for a trip to Lowe's, ain't it babe? Yep. Let's go. Good morning, it's the next day. So we did go to Lowe's last night, got some more materials, but due to this awesome fall back time that, you know, it goes dark at like six o'clock or 5.30. So ran out of light. So we had to wait till the next morning, but I've got some more materials here to finish up the project. So we got more tin. And then I actually got every piece of tin that they had. So I'm um, improvising and I got some of this a white piece. It's more of a plastic. Um, and I'm gonna use that to cover some of the front. And then we actually have this that was left over from our house build. Um, and what it is, it's a, a top cap. So it will work out perfectly for up here. I'm gonna set that right on top and that'll allow the rain to go down the tin rather than right down the middle of the uh, the place but there's so many options that you can use which we'll talk about all that once we finally get this done um, of different material options that you can use if you want to build this because it's such a good frame for so many different things than just a tractor so let's finish getting this tan on She's done. <laughs> so at the beginning of this video, I told you this was gonna be our chicken tractor. Yeah. It's turning into a goat house. <laughs> <laughs> so tell them your reasoning. Um, well, there's a few reasons. I just started looking at it and I was like, this seems like a lot for chickens that are only gonna be in it for like three weeks because <laughs> they're gonna be inside. Um, it's just, it's really well put together so it's like the nicest structure we have and I feel like if anybody should get it, it should be the goats. Yeah, so. um, it is going to get like really frigid cold this week mm -hmm. and we've been wanting to build them something better anyway. We were thinking three sided, but this is perfect for them so they can get in there and cuddle. I'll to answer that. 
<laughs> she always gets a phone call every time always. we record. <laughs> it was my mom. It was the mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at this real quick. But yeah, like she said, we have really frigid air coming in. We had to build something for the female goats anyways uh, to kind of help them out and get them out of the cold. Uh, and we just have so many animals over there. It'd be nice to have another structure. Yeah. But this is even going to work for like milking as well, yeah. kind of. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We can get in and sit down, um, but I mean, it could have multi purposes. Yeah. So we're going to get this over into the goat pen. We'll show you all. Then we're going to sit down and talk about all the possibilities that you have with this. Yeah. For example, we went tr chicken tractor to goat pen just like that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's get this over there. That'll be fun. Plus, we'll show you how light it is. Yeah. I know it looks like there's a lot of stuff on it, but it's still very light. Her and I are going to pull it over there. I bet even White could pick this thing Probably. up. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so the goats are checking it out. I haven't got to show you all fully since it's been done. Um, but we put the cap on the top. I left the overhang just so it would drain off a little bit further off. Um, but everything looks good here. We use chicken wire. Well, it's not specifically chicken wire, but it's the small hose. I think they call it like rabbit wire or something like that. Um, we put that on the top just for ventilation. And then we got these little white pieces that we put in the corner. And because there was a little gap down here, at the time we were still doing these for chickens. So I put chicken wire behind it and then put that up just so nothing could get out. Doors functional, we have the same thing on this side, and the back we just covered completely with tin. And like he was saying, there's ventilation there and here. So obviously air can flow through and they won't be hot in the summertime when they're sleeping and all that kinds of good stuff. So let's real quick, because you saw a lot of things fast forward and run through the materials we actually use. So starting at the bottom, you need four eight foot boards. I don't care what you use, but if you want to go on the lighter side, those are one by two. So they're very thin. Now they're not as durable as a two by two, so you gotta be careful with it, but that's, this is the whole way it's even slightly light is by using these one by two. So on the bottom, four eight foot one by twos. So we got an eight by eight square. I then use the same boards, it's all eight by eight squares. So somebody help me keep math here, that's four. So then we use the A frames. That was the next process I did. That's two, four, six, because there's three. One there, one at four foot, and then one at the back. So what are we at? Six plus four is 10. So we're at 10, eight by eight, or eight foot, one by two boards. Then I bottomed right here. One, two, three at the top. Those are still eight foot, so we still don't have any cuts that are in there. So those are allow you to put your tin on and also uh, make the structure sound. So that's six more. So what do we have for 16 boards? All of them eight foot long, not a single cut yet made. Then the first cuts that you're gonna do are your support on the back side. One, two, three. I was able to do this in two boards. The one at the bottom is eight foot and these two, I just kind of cut to measure, which you can, depending on where you place them, it's going to be a different measurement. So uh, I would just not take my measurement on that and actually uh, measure yourself for those. So that was two more. We're up to 18 boards. Move over to the front side and I use one here, one here. What number am I at? What did I say? 18? I'm up to 20? Somebody in the comments, y'all keep me honest here. So I'm up to 20, and then this was one, and that was one, so that was the same one, so we're up to 21. So we chose 10 siding. The reason we did that is because we were thinking winter. We weren't thinking little time. So the 10 siding is a little bit more expensive. Um, I think this is about $14 a sheet. It takes four to cover each side, so that's eight sheets just to do your sides. Um, then you can do the fronts and the backs however you want. We used about four pieces on the back um, and then none on the front besides these little white white pieces here, but that's different. So um, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 pieces of tin at eight foot tall. Um, you could also do a cheaper way and make this at a six foot tall building and the tin gets a lot cheaper that way. However, you're gonna be cutting probably your one by two boards because they normally come in eight foot sections. As long as you're okay with that and you're okay with a little bit smaller height, that'll make this a lot cheaper. The only other remaining stuff we used was a top piece, which was free. If you don't have one of these laying around, you could easily take a piece of tin or a piece of this and then just fold it over and screw it in. You don't have to get fancy and actually get a, a top cap that a, or a rain cap for this. You could even also honestly use a gutter. If you have a gutter laying around, you could use that and tack it on there. It's just anything to cover the top and disperse the water down instead of straight down the hole. That's it. 
Um, I think I added it up and because we did the 10, this is about a hundred to 150 dollar little structure, um, which is why the goats ended up with it, not the chickens. Um, but it's minimal materials, minimal wood, um, very minimal cutting. Um, really the only cutting I honestly had to do was the door. Um, and that's just because I didn't have a piece laying around that I could put up for it. But it kind of looks like it could fly away with the top piece on it, but I think it would work perfect. So as you see, we changed our minds about what kind of structure we were going to use it for. Um, we've talked about many things. This could be a greenhouse. You could either use that polycarbonate um, plastic sheeting or you could use the plastic that we use for our greenhouse and for our hoop houses. Um, you could use it as a chicken tractor. You could use it as a goat house. You could use it as a pig shelter, um, somewhere for them to sleep and get out of the rain. Uh, what else? That's, I mean, just endless, endless, endless option because it's storage. A, um, we actually thought about building right. another one to put our wood in yep. as a, a teepee. Ow! Uh, did you get a horn in the back? No, she just ripped my hair out. So needless to say, this simple, simple A-frame uh, structure that we just showed you how to build can be used for a million different things in your home. It can even be used as a little clubhouse for your kids. Yeah, the kids it really are wanting could. one now for the backyard. Guest house for a mother-in-law, yeah, whatever. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Anna, she's chewing on the mic. Yep. Um, but this is where we're gonna leave you all. That was a lot of stuff. Um, I promise it is light and you can easily add wheels to it. We just didn't. Yeah. Um, but it's light enough to just drag too. So I hope you all build it. Um, let us know if you do. I think it's super easy, super cool. I'm having to go higher and higher because yeah. of Anna. I feel very relieved because I now know that we can build a cheap and light structure for any of our animals because yep. I was stressing thinking what are we gonna put these goats in you know when they have their kids and they're into milk and what are we gonna put them in this winter what are we gonna put the chickens in now I know that we have one structure that we can use for all of them <laughs> right hi hello all right y'all Lot saying hi <laughs> say hi Lot. Hi. all right this is where we're gonna leave you all. The battery's about to die on this bad boy. Uh, we love you all. Let us know. If and the battery died. <laughs> Thankfully, we got two. So, I don't even know where we ended that. I don't either. It's been a hectic morning. It's not really been hectic. It was, honestly, it was one of those things when I realized it wouldn't fit through the gate. I was yeah. like, oh, that sucks. But it's fine. It's where it's it fine. is now. Everything's fine. It it's good. good. It does. I don't like the top piece. It's fine. It looks like it's gonna fly away. It's fine. <laughs> I said, do you want me to cut, cut off that overhang? She goes, no, it's fine. Just leave it on there. But now I'm like, it's gonna, it's gonna take off to space. <laughs> um, but it's 100% gonna do the job keeping the goats dry, yep. keeping them out of the wind, and it's gonna be perfect in the summer without any altercations needed onto it. Now um, I can rest easy this week because I know that they'll be warm and dry. Yeah, so it was fall yesterday, it's spring today, it's actually hot, and tomorrow it's gonna be winter yep. here in Kentucky. I'm sure you all are probably facing that too, but craziness. So now we're gonna build another one for the chickens and the rabbits and the boy goats. Yeah, so you'll <laughs> be seeing that structure. Everywhere. A little modified, and you know, no, that was the first time we did it. So now I know a little modifications I may make. Uh, Cheaper wise, especially with the tin. I don't think we need as much as we did yep. there. I mean, you could easily just put a tarp over it, which I'll probably do for the, the chickens. chickens. Yeah. Uh, just because they don't need anything special, you know, to be completely honest. So that's it. All right. We love you. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.